Okay, so hi everyone, and welcome to today's session on Oracle HCM Absence Management. So let us give a short introduction of ourselves, and then we can get started with this session. So my name is Nandan Paul, and I have been working at Soyuz as an associate software engineer from the past six months. And I, I would request Gunjan to give his introduction as well. Uh, hi, good evening to all. I am Gunjan Adhikari from Kolkata, serving Soyuz for last six months as a associate software engineer. Thank you. Thank you, Gunjan. So before starting this webinar, just wanted to clarify a few things. That first thing is that we have divided this webinar into two parts, the theoretical part and the practical part. The theory part will be explained by me and the practical part by Gunjan. And another thing is that if you have any questions during the presentation, please keep a note of it so that you can ask at the end during the QA session. Okay. So now let's check the let's uh, check today's agenda. First, we have the importance of Oracle HCM. Then we will dive deep into absence management and check its terminologies. And then uh, the we will check the process flow steps and the practical part that how it is done. Let's move on to the Oracle HCM and check uh, what is uh, what is Oracle HCM. So Oracle HCM enables organization to effectively hire, onboard, compensate and manage the welfare of the workforce. And th this cloud service is managed by employees, managers and HR specialists. Employee use it to initiate leave request through employee self-service. Manager use it to approve or reject the request initiated by employee. And HR specialist use it to define new absence type, set leave balances for employee, record absences, run actual processes, and generate absence report as well. So these all make Oracle HCM an end-to-end -end solution for any organization. So now let's move on to the overview of absence management. So HCM, it is quite a large product within the Oracle Cloud and absence management fits within one of the five pillars called workforce management. And it sits alongside time and labor. The reason why it sits alongside time and labor is because most companies that implement both implement them together so that the employee can enter their uh, absence information through the time cards. However, for this session, we are only going to be concentrating on absence management. Absence management also enables us to manage absences globally and effectively. And at the same time, it also enables us to save on time and cost, minimize compliance risk and increase productivity. Let's now check the absence management building blocks. Now, there are a lot of building blocks that make up absence management configuration, including absence plan, repeating time period, absence categories, absence types, absence pattern, absence reasons, and certification. Now, not all of them are required every single time and for every configuration. It depends on the requirement of an implementation. Now, let's say, for example, not every absence type requires reasons or certification. So it depends mainly on the configuration of the business needs. Now let's check the components one by one in a short and uh, brief way. First is the absence plan. Absence plan, uh, it is created to define rules for actual leave time and receiving payments during an absence period. So at least one absence plan should be associated with an absence type. There are uh, mainly six different types of absence plan available in Fusion Absence Management. They are the actual qualification, no entitlement, agreement, compensatory, and donation. Next component we have is the repeating time period. So many organizational tasks need continually generated time period, such as weekly time period that starts every Sunday. So uh, this is an optional step as because the requirement actual should happen monthly and Oracle itself delivers default setup option for monthly actual. Next, we have the absence categories. Absence categories are created to group absences type for reporting and analysis. For example, let's say we can create an absence category for family leave and associate with it the absence types such as maternity, paternity, and childcare. Next, we move on to the absence pattern. Absence pattern contains a predefined set of rules 
that we can use as a starting point to create an absence type. So when we create an absence type, we must associate with any of the following predefined patterns like inless, childbirth, or the generic absence. So for example, we can say that uh, if we select the generic absence pattern to create an absence type, then we can schedule a vacation time using the time accrued under a vacation actual plan. Next, we have the absence reason. Absence reason, it is an optional attribute as because uh, it can be configured to specify the reason for an absence. Like for example, if we apply for a sick leave, then absence entry will be sick and the absence reasons will be flu. Last, we have the certification. Certification, we, the, uh, we need this uh, certification due to illness. Like for example, one can set up a requirement that workers must uh, submit a doctor's certificate within a stipulated period of time. Then uh, we can uh, ensure that uh, they can they receive a full payment for the absence duration. So these are some of the building blocks. Uh, now, next we have the terminologies which I explained. Uh, I will go through this again. We have here we have the absence reason. Absence reason, as I said earlier, it is an optional attribute that can be configured to specify the reason for an absence. Like for example, uh, if you apply for a sick leave, then absence entry will be sick and the absence reason will be flu. Then we have the absence plan. Absence plans, uh, it is created to define rules for accruing leave, leave time and receiving payments during an absence period. So at least one absence plan must be associated with an absence type. Uh, and absence plans also links absence management to global payroll for processing and paying absences. Next, we have the absence type. Absence type, this is the feature we see on our screen when we uh, apply for an absence. It is also used to group absences for reporting, like for sick, vacation, and many more. And uh, absence type, it also uh, has display feature, customer display feature for each absence. So uh, the theory part ends here. I will now request Gunjan to take over. Over to you, Gunjan. Thank you. Yeah, so I want to thank Nilanjan for briefing the absence management and I am going to give you some more clarification about the same. So I, I just want to request uh, Nilanjan to uh, move the slide. Yeah, so here this building block show us the states by which absence or the leaves is generated and calculated and it's going to the payroll for the ultimate calculation. First of all, we create the derived factor and eligibility profile for an employee or a set of employees as per the company's absence policy because it is different for each and every companies that their policy is different. In step two, as per the derived factor and the eligibility profile, we create some absence plan and link it with the derived factor and eligibility profile and define the actual matrix. In step three, we create a absence type and link the type with the absence plan. In the step four, we open the person management page for each and every employee. There is a person profile by which we can access all the details of that person like, uh, you know, absence history, leave balance, etc. Then we enroll the employee into the absence plan. When an employee is already enrolled with the absence plan, he or she can log into his profile and apply for a leave. Then the leave needs to approve from the manager. If manager wants, he can approve it. Otherwise, he reject it. Now we discuss the steps in more in detail in the next slide. Okay, so this is the derived factor. So derived factor define how to calculate certain eligibility criteria that change over time such as a person age or length of service we add derived factor to the eligibility profile then link it to the absence plan like there are different types of derived factor such as age let me take an example if someone age is more than 55, 
then company wants to give them some extra benefit in absence same as like length of service uh, you know age can't be the only factor to get some more because if you serve a company for a long period company also give you some more benefit similarly there is a combination of age and length and there is hours work that is if an if any employee works more in a month and cross the scheduled working hours he would need uh, some benefit as well so there are the various derived factor now i move to the next slide that is eligibility profile use of an eligibility profile to determine whether a person qualifies for enrollment in an absence plans or not to associate the eligibility profile with an absence plan we have to first create the eligibility profile using eligibility profile task in the absence work area second by associate the eligibility profile with absence plan using absence plan task if we take an example to enable only female employees to record maternity leave we create an eligibility profile using manage eligibility profile task then when we create a maternity qualification absence then the absence plan is linked to that eligibility profile with with the with that plan moving to the next slide yeah so create absence plan to define rules for acquiring leave time and receiving payments during an absence periods we must associate at least one absence plan with one absence type maybe absence plan is accrual maybe qualified maybe compensatory here we also focus uh, on accrual matrix also let's start with what do we mean by absence accrual matrix absence mean lack of presence accrual means method of accumulating hence absence accrual matrix will stand for method of accumulating absence for multiple combination so we, when we have different accrual rules like front loaded accrual that is allocate all leaves in first day of a year and there is another type that is periodic accrual allocate leaves in regular intervals so this is the things in absence plan now we move into the next slide when we create an absence type such as sick leave type we inc include rules to determine when user record or manage an absence of that type for example we can restrict workers so that they can record absence only of a particular duration we can send an alert if duration exceed to the maximum value absence type is also various types that is like sick leaves on leaves casual leaves short time leaves and long time leaves etc but all the leaves policy is different to company to company so now i am moving to the next slide so how to enroll a worker to a plan and eligibility profile has been defined which restricts eligibility to permanent workers only an employee was hired as a trainee then they become a permanent employee so become eligible for the absence plan however they are not enrolled automatically in that plan when the update actual plan enrollment process run only then they are enrolled in the plan so so here we complete our webinar on uh, absence management uh, uh, and thanks all of you for uh, joining with us and giving us your precious time i would also like to my co member for uh, supporting us and thank you next slide please so we are swais family putting our customer first since 2006 we provide full spectrum technology solution in people soft oracle cloud saas 
Workday, Workshop, and RPA, and to more than 50 global client. Our headquarter is in Bangalore. We also expand ourselves in Kolkata as well as overseas in Chicago, USA. And uh, next slide, please. And you can uh, connect us by these forums like our website, mail, Facebook, etc. All details are given here. So before ending this session, I would like to ask you if you have any question, uh, you can send us. We will revert back as soon as possible through your email or via Teams. So um, thank you. And this is all from my side.